hello, hello to my early joiners. Welcome. We will get started in just a few moments. We are waiting for other participants to join us. Welcome. So while we're waiting, it would be great if you could leverage your chat box uh, and let us all know where you're from. So if you're gonna use the chat, make sure you select all panelists and attendees so we can all see your message. So where are you all joining us from? I am currently located in uh, the United States in Georgia in the city of Atlanta. Hi, Jerry, thanks for joining us from Singapore. Anyone else wanna share where you are joining us from? Okay, we've got Amani from Kuwait. Uh, Julia from Brazil, awesome. Welcome, welcome. We will get started again in just a little bit. All right, Abner from Can uh, Quebec. Actually, I had a really good friend named Abner growing up. Uh, uh, named, yeah, named Abner. All right, thank you. All right, everyone. My name is Jacqueline Faith and I will be the facilitator for this information session. Uh, so welcome to the info session for leading organizations and change uh, through the partnership with MIT Sloan and Emeritus. Now, before we jump into the content, I've got just a couple of housekeeping items. First, you will notice that your mic is muted. That is intentional just for the efficiency of the webinar. Uh, second, if you need to communicate with myself, any of the other participants or, or program support, please utilize the chat box. If you're utilizing the chat box, please make sure you select all panelists and attendees so that everyone can see your question or comment. If you have any specific questions that you would like for me to answer, it's much easier for me to manage them if you utilize the Q&A box. So any questions you have, um, use the Q&A box, all right? Uh, so that's it for the housekeeping rule, uh, items. Now, what are we gonna talk about today? We're gonna to talk a little bit about the MIT faculty member that provides the content for this course, as well as myself as your course leader. We'll talk about emeritus and what emeritus is, and then we will dive into an overview of what is in this course, where all of the value is derived. We'll talk about what the learning journey looks like and what the learning experience for Emeritus is, and then we'll have some time to dive into any questions that you have. All right, so first and foremost, my name is Jacqueline Faith. I'm pleased to be here with you. I am a, a course leader for this particular course. Uh, a little bit about me, I've got about 12 years of cross-functional experience, both in industry and as a management consultant. Um, my career has largely focused on delivering change management for large transformational projects. I've also dabbled in the HR transformation side as well as leadership development. In terms of my educational background, I've got an undergraduate degree in business administration with a concentration in accounting. And then I've also got a master's of industrial organizational psychology from the University of Georgia. So the content that's in this, in this course is especially significant to me because it is the bread and butter of what I do on the day-to-day -day basis and how I'm able to partner with and enable uh, transformation for my organization as well as clients. Now, I'd like to start off by introducing you to the MIT faculty that you get the distinct pleasure of being taught by. And his name is Dr. John Van McManon. 
And as I mentioned, he is the, the key content provider. So the videos within the course that you'll be consuming will be from Dr. Van McManen. And he is a professor of organizational studies at uh, MIT Sloan School of Management. Uh, he's also by trade an ethnographer of organizations, right? Which means that he studies the nature of these organizations and it, it the they range from <laughs> police organizations uh, to educational institution as well as business. So when you talk about um, the research that he does and all of the thought leadership that he provides, uh, it's around these organizations. Now, um, I think that he has such an amazing way to distill down um, the key concepts in a way that is relevant and meaningful and allows you to immediately apply uh, that to your day-to-day -day, uh, work, right? So just a little bit more about Dr. Van McManen. He is the Shell Professor of Management and Professor of Organizational Studies at MIT Sloan. Um, he's taught at MIT Sloan since 1972. And uh, he has served as the faculty chair of the MIT Sloan Fellowship Program at MIT. Uh, Dr. Van McManen has earned his master's and PhD in social administration from the University of Irvine. Um, he has uh, produced works within the field of organizational behavior and theory. Like I mentioned before, he's an ethnographer of organizations. Uh, and uh, cultural descriptions figure prominently in his studies um, of such diverse work worlds uh, from beat policemen on the streets of the United States to detectives uh, in London to fishermen in North Atlantic, um, MBA students at MIT and Harvard Business School. It, it just runs the gamut. So why have I spent so much time talking about this particular uh, professor and what he's done and his educational background? I think it's really important to point to the value and the quality of instruction that you will get as a part of this. I have been uh, in, involved in leading organizational change in some form or fashion for the last 12 years uh, plus of my career. And when I became course leader for this course, there were a number of concepts that were brand new to me that I learned that I was able to apply to increase the effectiveness of my work. Now let's talk a little bit about Emeritus. Emeritus offers management education programs in collaboration with executive education divisions of a variety of schools, including MIT Sloan, uh, Columbia Business School, uh, Tuck School of Business at Dartmouth, to name a few. The founding academic institutions play a really critical role in establishing the academic rigor of these programs that are delivered through this institute. So each founding academic institute uh, has committed to contributing its intellectual leadership in the form of core courses and electives. So like I said, we partner with some of the most renowned organizations in the world to create and deliver this content. We even have a couple of courses in which faculty from the university delivers live webinars for our students. So Emeritus has served over 50,000 students across the world. So even in the context of this webinar, one of the first things that I did was say, where are all of you from, right? We've got someone from Canada. We've got someone from Brazil, Kuwait, right? And it, one of my favorite things about supporting this course is the global nature of the participants because they help, you all help to bring so much content and bring these concepts to life and share alternating perspectives, which is really important for the learning process. Now, you, Emeritus follows a unique online learning model and 
With this model, we've been able to ensure that nearly 90% of our learners successfully complete the course. So there are elements of this course that's specially designed for adult learners, right? And so it's a mix of live webinars. There are assignments, there are discussion boards, um, there are in this course simulations. We also have guest lectures. Um, there are so many elements of this course that help to drive home the content to make it real and relevant to what you're doing. In addition to the unique learning um, opportunity that you have, there is also the Emeritus Network, which is essentially a platform that enables past and current uh, Emeritus attendees to network, right? Come together, share ideas, experiences, uh, identify opportunity. So this is just one additional perk that you get. You get access to the whole body of participants, the over 50,000 that have taken these courses and gone on to do great things. Now let's talk specifically about the course. And uh, I support a number of courses. This is by far my favorite, and I'm gonna tell you why. So from an overview perspective, um, this course is delivered online, as I mentioned, um, across two months. Um, in order to successfully meet the requirements, it will require you to take an investment in yourself, take it very seriously, and devote two to four hours a week towards your learning. Now, as I mentioned, this is an investment in yourself. Um, in your professional development. And I often say behind technology, right, behind uh, keeping a abreast of the technological advances, managing and leading change is probably the next most critical skill set that you can develop. And unfortunately, many of us don't get exposure to these concepts until later in our careers. So even if you're early in your career, or even if you're a seasoned professional, these concepts, these tools, these techniques that are being shared are extremely relevant. So within the course, uh, there are five modules and every week um, content is delivered to you. And in the next slide, I'll talk about what those modules are. In addition to the online content that is presented for you within the Canvas platform, there are also live webinars that I would support you through myself or another course leader where we go over the content, we really try to dive in, I try very hard to extend the material, provide you even more resources beyond what is shared in the course that I have found uh, very valuable as my role as a leader, a change management leader uh, within my organization as well as a, um, as a consultant. So I think that you will find this to be incredibly valuable for you. Once you go through and complete all of the modules, uh, you will be awarded a digital certificate that demonstrates that you have received, you completed all, everything that needs to be done, that you have been awarded this certificate, which is in conjunction with uh, Emeritus and MIT Sloan that you can then display, add to your LinkedIn profile, and also seek to uh, increase that credibility. Now, when we're talking about what is in the actual content of the course, module one focuses on uh, introducing you to some critical foundational concepts, right? The MIT's four capabilities of leadership. And what we're talking about here is uh, a mechanism for measuring and assessing your own leadership, as well as how you can assess the leadership of your organization and of those who are involved in the projects that you're in 
to help you build robust teams. Then you're introduced to the three perspectives of an organization, right? And so that's the strategic, political, and cultural. And what you'll often find is that when people engage in change, when people engage in projects, they often only look at the strategic elements when assessing the organization and completely overlook really critical pieces like the political and cultural lenses uh, for their organizations, right? And we'll talk about that. Then we'll talk about power and influence. How do you identify where sources of power are? How do you increase your own power within the organization, power and influence? And how do you leverage that knowledge to drive the kinds of changes that you need, right? Very powerful, very practical stuff. And then we go into, in module four, organizational uh, networks, which in my opinion, is one of the most undervalued skill and competency around understanding networks, the nature of networks and how to leverage them to increase effect, uh, efficiency and effectiveness and drive uh, organizational outcomes. Very powerful stuff. Uh, that you can immediately put into practice. And then finally, my absolute favorite part of this course is the change simulation. This is a Harvard business change simulation that we give you access to. And it allows you to take all of the concepts that you've learned in the first four modules and put it into practice in a realistic yet simplified simulation. It is amazing. And one of the things that I do, I'll talk about a little bit more to come, is I give you, uh, we do a webinar and I walk through uh, how to think about the simulation and give you strategies for how you can uh, more effectively execute the simulation and put everything that you've learned into practice. Now, um, this course is delivered on a platform called Canvas, and it is very simple, very easy to navigate, very intuitive, right? Think iPhone. You pick up an iPhone, you figure out how to use it very, very quickly. It's very similar to that. And this particular platform is really great because it allows you to access the content seamlessly from your device. So if you are, you can attend on a phone, you can attend on a tablet, you don't need to be stuck in front of a computer in order to do the work. So it makes it very, very convenient for adult learners who are really busy um, and have to find time to consume the content. So I think you will have an appreciation for how simple it is. Uh, and everything you need essentially is on this panel on the left. And then you go through the respective modules. It's delivered in a very uh, easy to follow sequential um, format. Now, I talked a little bit about this simulation. This is a very robust, very, very complex in its design, but uh, straightforward and simple in its execution. Now, with the simulation, there are four scenarios. So not every single one person will have the same scenario. Um, the way that it's divided is there are four different contexts that you can get. You, in terms of your role for the simulation, you're either the CEO of the company or you're a middle manager, right? And then you're either in a high urgency context or a low urgency context. And those, that, those distinctions are very important because the strategy or technique that you're gonna use is going to vary. So with this simulation, your goal is to get a critical mass of adopters. You start with one adopter and that is yourself. And you have to develop strategies for how you get everybody else on board, right? 
and there are very there are various elements that create con, um, complexity, right? So there's, uh, you have to manage your credibility because if your credibility goes too low, then no matter what interventions you use, you will not be successful, just like in real life, right? Within here, we pull in the concept of the organizational networks. We give you um, 18 different change levers that you can pull right? You get to interview the folks that are in the org chart to give you insight, which is really important because there's some uh, details, some facts that you won't even know until you interview folks. So it's a really robust simulation that all of my participants love, whether you get it right or get it wrong, Everyone that I have communicated with about this say that it is part, you know, one of the best parts of the course and the simulation alone makes, uh, you know, taking this course worthwhile. Uh, so if you decide to join in, um, I even give you um, a document that I use to analyze my choices and the outcomes and strategize the way that I would do it next time. So very, very robust, very, very valuable element of the course. So I have a question for you. Please utilize your chat box to respond and make sure you select all panelists and attendees so that we can um, see. So how many of you are actively participating in a change initiative in your organization right now? Just, uh, just type yes and send. I just want to get a sense for, okay, uh, we've got a couple folks that are saying yes, right? Um, how many of you are expected to lead a change in the near future, either by yourself or as a part of the team, right? And then the um, other question is, are any of you uh, currently assisting other companies or businesses undergoing a change, which is uh, like you're a consultant or a contractor or something like that, right? And the point is, almost every one of you will be involved in change in some form of fashion. Whether you're currently actively leading a change, whether you will in the future, or whether you're helping someone else enact some kind of change, some project, some technology implementation, some process change, some cultural change, you all, if you are not today at some point, will be in a position to drive change within your organization, even if you are not the leader of it. So it's, it's critical, especially as we look at how rapidly things are changing today and how much volatility and chaos and uncertainty there is, having a structured framework through which you enact change and manage through that is really critical to success in this day and age from a career perspective. Now let's talk about our participants. I mentioned before that we have a global participant group, right? Um, we have, you know, from past courses that I've supported, I have um, in, in one given class, I've had uh, folks for as, from as many as 20, 25 countries or more in one class, right? And so, you know, in terms of those ha who have attended courses across uh, the timeline, more than 75 countries have been represented. So again, this is to me one of the best draws of this course. You get to learn from and partner with and work with people from all across the, or, uh, all across the, the world, um, which means that you're getting perspectives and insights from all across the world as you're learning. In terms of industry, we've got every industry that you can 
imagine, right? Down to education, we've had medical professionals, consultants, CFOs of organizations, we've had uh, financial services, ed tech, anything that you can think of, we have had participants take this course. So again, variety and diversity of perspective is one of the benefits of this course. And this piece I especially love. We have such a great diversity of experience. So we've got folks with less than one year experience all the way to those who have greater than 25 years experience, right? And everyone learning together, everyone providing their insights. Um, and so the content is such that it is relevant to you if you are just starting your career or if you're a seasoned professional, right, to help you um, see things a little bit differently or help you identify some new tools that you can leverage in the context of your organization to become even more effective as a leader in your organization. So I, I've talked a little bit about um, what the user experience is, about the learning platform and the live lectures. Um, another thing that I'll highlight is that discussion boards are an important part of this course. And because this is an online course, it can be really difficult sometimes to facilitate that peer learning. But in terms of adult education, practices, peer learning is a really critical part of making the content sit, stick, to see other people's perspectives, to see how they executed it in their respective parts of the world is really critical to learning. So there are a number of discussion boards that help you, that are there meant to help you to distill some of your learning and share your insights with everyone. Really critical part of uh, the learning process. Now, um, along with the online content, as I mentioned, each of our courses has at least one course leader like myself, right? And the course leaders are meant to provide subject matter expertise. Uh, They're folks with extensive experience, um, that can help to contextualize a lot of the content. And so I'm here to support you to answer any questions about the course contents or the assignments, to give you feedback on your assignments when they're great, and to moderate the discussions to create a more co engaging course experience. I offer myself to you, even if you do not uh, choose to um, take the course that you can leverage me as a resource. You can find me on LinkedIn. Please feel free to uh, request and connect me with me. My name is Jacqueline Faith. I, as far as I know, I may be the only Jacqueline Faith on there, but I'm happy to connect with you and help in any way that I can provide resources or what have you, but for sure, you'll have a lot more access to me as a part of this course. And in past uh, runs of this course, I've had uh, some of the participants ask me questions about and help to brainstorm about how to approach certain real world scenarios that they're in, right? How to create strategies around some challenging change resistance or any of that kind of thing. So I, I'm here to support uh, the participants in that way, but I'd like to also offer that to you as well. Now, here is a little bit about the course fees. There are a variety of flexible payment options that exist um, for you. The course of this run of the course begins on June 30th, and you have your application deadline on June 29th, right? So that's the information about the fees of the course and, and um, the timeline for applying to the course. Once you conclude the course, you will be issued a certificate like this that demonstrates that this content 
uh, is right out of the MIT Management Executive Education. This content, and I didn't mention this before, this content that is being delivered is the same content that is being delivered to MBA students at MIT Sloan. The change simulation that you're having the ability to go through is the same simulation that the MBA students go through when they take this course. So, what you know, it's a I, I've said it multiple times. There are a number of things that I love about this course, and one of those things is that it gives you access right where you are to high quality education and resources right it also gives you an added layer of credibility um, because it demonstrates to those who are around you to your colleagues to your linkedin connections to anyone that you're committed to developing yourself as a leader and as a as a comp um as a competent professional and i challenge you to go and see how many jobs are now seeking change management skills, right? So this really puts you in a good position to secure one of those opportunities because it demonstrates that you have, you now have that competency, right? So very, very valuable skill set um, that you are able to develop as a part of this course. So that is it for the content that I had to share. What questions do you have for me? So let me go ahead and take a look in the chat box to see if I have missed any questions. Okay. So, um, oh, that's awesome. Uh, so there's uh, someone named uh that mm, i'm gonna mispronounce this so please forgive me uh vedanth um who is in south africa who said that they did the program last year and decided to join to give some support and that they thoroughly enjoyed the program i am so pleased that you were willing to do that thank you so much that's very kind of you Okay, and then let's see here. Um, he also said, I'm awaiting an appointment as a director of a unit that needs to undergo a major overhaul as it is not properly uh, capacitate, capacity. Um, I'm looking forward to using the knowledge that I learned in the course, awesome. Okay, so Gerald has asked, do we get a hard copy of the certificate? And I would defer that question to program support. Can you please let us know um, if we are providing physical copies of the certificate? Uh, if you could just let me know in the chat box or um, respond to the question in the Q&A. Uh, is it also possible for people to get physical copies of the certificate? So while we're going to await program supports response, are there any other questions that I can answer? Um, questions about the course, questions about the content, questions about me or my career or experience, I'm happy to share. Okay, we've got someone from the Philippines. Um, and what is the usual time for the online mentoring? So the, uh, the live webinar sessions, I believe, are typically delivered either at 12 um, or 1 p.m. UTC time, I believe. Um, but from my perspective, it's often delivered anywhere from 7 a.m. Um, to 9 a.m. Um, Eastern Standard Time, which is where I am. But I believe it's 12 or 1 p.m. UTC time. 
Okay, we've got Daniel saying, I joined a little late. I can't uh, commit to this course. Will there be another opportunity to do this course? Uh, yes, there are. there will be multiple runs. So right now, this course is starting in June. Um, once this course concludes, there will likely be another run after that. I'm not sure of the timing just yet, um, but general, it probably, if this is June, um, there may be another run in August, um, I think, uh, but don't quote me on that. Uh, course support or program support who's here should be able to um, provide insight into that. So um, just for those who are curious about the hard copies of the certificate program support came back and says, yes, you can request one to be posted to your address. However, you will have to pay for the courier fees. Any final questions? Again, my name is Jacqueline Faith. Uh, feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. Um, if you have any additional questions specifically about this course, you can reach out to program support. They will be able to assist you. Any final questions before I let you all go? It was so great to be here with you. I feel very fortunate that I get to walk along participants uh, as they learn about these concepts. I think they're critically important and really valuable. Um, please leverage me in any way uh, that I can help you uh, now or in the future. So if there are no other questions, I will go ahead and let everyone go and get back to their day. Uh, it was such a pleasure to connect with all of you. Oh, uh, we have one other question. What type of industries are being covered in the business cases that, will, that are part of the course? That is a good question. I'll have to think about the, um, the case study. So we've got the ACME case study which I believe is a manufacturing organization. There is another case study that deals with a local government. Um, then there is the simulation, which has to do with a um, sunglasses manufacturer. Um, let me think. There are a couple ones. So if you will share your email address with me in the chat, I can go back through and enumerate all of the different industries um, that are represented. But I think what you'll find is that these um, concepts are applicable across industry, right? No matter what, it's going to look and feel a little bit different about how you, um, you execute it but the the fundamental framework is the same and i i can attest to that because in my career i have executed change in a utilities organization and pharma organization consumer goods um technology uh health um maritime um manufacturing um so uh, I, I have been involved in change for a wide variety of organizations and I can attest that once you have the foundation and the frameworks in place, um, you can execute it across industries. All right. All right. So again, thank you all so much for joining me today. Um, I have enjoyed uh, delivering this content to you. Please feel free to send any um, questions that you have to me or to program support so that we can make sure we get those answered. Again, thank you all so much. I'm so grateful that you decided to spend part of your day with me learning about how you can increase your capabilities as a leader of change. I hope it was informative um, and I hope to see you as a part of this upcoming cohort. Um, so thanks so much and I hope you all have a wonderful day.